<laughs> Man's got to take his chances, don't judge. So, two comedians to go. Please welcome to the stage your next comedian, Addy. Thank you, Peter, for accommodating me on a very, very short notice. Um, I just walked in here 10 minutes ago, so I didn't hear any of your shitty jokes. Don't worry, other comedians. You come next week. Um, Yo mama, way to go, way to go. Thank you for raising the bar so high that I almost shat my pants sitting right here. And uh, thank you Peter for bringing it all the way down to the ground so that I have somewhere to build. Um, how many people do we have in the room tonight? 30? 35? Um, let's, let's, let's do a round of applause if you think there are more than five countries represented in the room. More than five countries. Yeah. More than six. More than eight. More than ten. More than ten. Nah, I don't think so. This is not a fucking UN convention. <laughs> yeah. Um, the last time I was here was before July, so it was hot, and the birds were chirping, and uh, this jacket wouldn't have done well. Um, <laughs> But since then, so much has happened that I don't know where I stand in the world anymore. I mean, uh, India went from a country that was a colonial fucking slave country to being a colonial power, which is, you know, great. Every country has its day of the sun. And uh, the Indians have said to burn Kashmir for the sunlight that they wanted. Uh, yeah, um, this is going to be a pretty dark set. <laughs> uh, something that happens when you spend four months away from the comedy scene and just absorb news, like one wave after the other, is uh, you get shot like uh, seven to ten year old Kashmiri boys with pellets in their face uh, so that they go blind and can't protest anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, shout out to Kashmir guys. Uh, if this one makes it there, which I don't know if it will, uh, I won't be able to go back to India, which is okay, because um, I have permanent residency here. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. But the thing I'm about to say now might get me kicked out of Japan, so I might be an international refugee. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, fucking Abe. Motherfucking <laughs> Abe. What a piece of shit, what a loser, what an asshole. Um, I don't know, I don't want to do original material on Abe right now. Let's just talk about climate change. Yeah? Do you believe in climate change? Yeah. Make some more noise for believe in climate change. I can't yeah. Oh, uh, are you for climate change or are you against climate change? <laughs> Alright, um, talk to me after the show. The rest of you, uh, I'll direct this message to you right now. Um, I have been working with Fridays for Future Tokyo, XR Japan, Climate Youth Japan, Global Climate Action Japan, pretty much any other thing with Japan appended to it, which is full of foreigners and uh, no Japanese people. <laughs> That's not fair. Love you guys. Um, but I must say, there is a global movement led by young people in support of sustainable consumption and uh, leaving the planet in a better place than we found it, you know? We were brought up in the age of the internet and so we know how to navigate fake news, unlike the oldies over here. Um, 50 seconds. And uh, while we might not be, um, fuck, I lost my train of thought. While we, while we might not be immune to the occasional fake viral news story, which, you know, let's face it, we've all been there. Um, that story about how a man's armpit can change a woman's period. Yeah. What? That one threw me off. Um, I believe that. I was 11. I was sitting in the back of my car with my parents, and I told them that as a fun fact for the day. I was like, hey, did you know that uh, if you smell a man's armpit, it can change a woman's period. And uh, I was grounded for a month after that. So that's my set, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.